Welcome back all of you to part three of stereochemistry. In this session, we'll be covering geometrical isomerism. It's a very interesting topic. Let us have a look. This is just an overview of the syllabus and in today's class under stereo isomerism, we will be covering geometrical isomerism in compounds with double bonds and in cycloalkanes. This trans and acid notations, rules and examples. First of all, we need to understand what are stereoisomers. Well, we have already seen structural isomers in the previous section. There, the molecules had the same molecular formula, but they differ in their structural formula. But when you come to stereoisomers, you see that the molecules have the same molecular formula, same structural formula also, but they differ in their properties. And they can be isolated from each other, separated from each other. How is it possible? Why? Because these isomers differ in their configuration. What do you mean by configuration? That is the spatial arrangement. How the atoms and the bonds are arranged in space when you consider a three-dimensional picture of the molecule, both these isomers will differ. And such isomers are called stereoisomers. The classification of stereoisomerism is shown over here. Stereoisomerism can be classified as configurational isomerism and conformational isomerism. Well, configuration again classified, again subclassified as geometrical isomerism and optical isomerism. Geometrical subclassifications, this trans and is it easy. Optical, diastereomers and enantiomers. Well, in today's topic, geometrical isomerism, we will be seeing all these shown in, in color, in detail. This is the first topic under stereoisomerism, and then we will be seeing optical isomerism, and then we will be seeing conformational isomerism. Here we are at geometrical isomerism, a classification of stereoisomerism. And here the geometrical isomerism exists because of restricted rotation, restricted rotation in organic molecules because of the presence of either double bonds or because of the cyclic nature of the compound, the cyclic compounds. Now we are going to have a look at the CC rotation. In this example, I hope you can see this model this is an ethane, substituted ethane. Well, we need to concentrate only on the carbon-carbon bond. Both the carbon atoms are shown in this model in black color, the black balls. So, uh, when the two carbons are connected by a single bond, carbon-carbon free rotation is possible. Fixing one of the carbon atoms also let us try to rotate the can be freely rotated. One of the carbon, the other can be freely rotated. So the carbon-carbon rotation is possible in such molecules. Let us have a look at the screen now. Here you can see the carbon-carbon bond is bonded by a single bond and free rotation is possible. Now let us take another uh, case. That is when carbon carbon are bonded by double bond let us keep this model away and take a carbon carbon double bond this is it here in this case you can see two carbon atoms are connected by a double bond i hope this is visible to you now suppose you're trying to rotate it there is restriction that is because when you have a double bond one of the bonds is a pi bond, not planar as in the case of sigma bond. This pi bond causes a restriction that is not on the plane of the molecule, it is perpendicular to it. 
and hence we do not have that you can see over here i have shown it as a cross we cannot have a free rotation about a carbon carbon double bond and that is why we call it restricted rotation now in this slide we will try to understand that concept of restricted rotation and geometrical isomerism in a simpler manner well when two bonds are bonded by a double bond free rotation about this bond is restricted that is what we have been saying till now let us consider a carbon carbon double bond it need not be carbon carbon always but in this module we are considering carbon molecules so let it be between two carbon atoms in such cases about this imaginary axis rotation of the molecule is restricted well in such cases they can exhibit geometrical isomerism when the two substituents on each carbon are different what does that mean we know that the valency of carbon is 4 when a double bond exists between two carbon atoms two of the valencies two out of the four valencies are already satisfied how many left two are left well these two free valencies if they are substituted by two different substituents please see here two different substituents let one be p and the other should not be p it has to be a different one so let it be q here same has to be the case with the second carbon atom if one is p the other has to be a different one if this is the case such molecules can exhibit geometrical isomerism geometrical isomerism is also present in cyclic compound the nomenclature in geometrical isomers how the isomers are named there are two different kinds of nomenclature one is called the cis trans nomenclature and the second one is called the ez or eez nomenclature in the first case that is cis trans when at least one similar substituent is present on each atom of the double bond that means the doubly bonded atoms are here on each atom at least one substituent has to be the same the other one also can be the same or it can be different it can be q and q here it can be r and r here but at least one should be the same then it it is cis trans if both the similar substituents on the same side of the double bond it is a cis and if the similar substituents are on either side of the double bond then it is a trans we will be seeing that in the coming slides moving on to the next nomenclature that is e is it nomenclature this happens when all the four groups around the cc double bond are different here the two carbon connected through double bonds and the substituents connected to the carbon atoms if all the four are different here we have one similar the second similar one is replaced by a different group then p q r s all are different in such case e is it notation is uh, allocated for naming the compound we will understand the nomenclature better by considering few case studies starting with a very simple compound 2 butene ch3 ch double bond ch ch3 let is represent it in this way the two carbon atoms doubly bonded carbon atoms are going to be shown like this c1 and c2 because these are the two carbon atoms we are going to focus on now each carbon atom is left with two valencies is the case here well from here we know that this carbon a doubly bonded carbon has a hydrogen and a ch3 we'll put it here a hydrogen and a ch3 same here also 
a methyl and a hydrogen. The color code I have given so that the picture is more clear to you. Now please have a look. Similar groups CH3 are there. Restricted rotation is there because of the double bond and here also similar groups. So here similar groups are arranged on the same side of the double bond. And this is a cis isomer. This is how you answer. This compound exhibits geometrical isomerism. The reason for that is restricted rotation about the CC double bond. Now, since similar groups are there on the same on the C1 and C2 doubly bonded carbon atoms on the same side, it is the cis isomer. Okay, so this is the pattern in which you should be answering your question. We will consider one more example. A similar one, but in the transform, transbutane. How does it look? Please note that the molecular formula is just the same, but the arrangement, the 3D arrangement is going to be different. This is the skeleton we are going to fill up with the substituents. Hydrogen on this side and a methyl group on this side. On this second carbon atom, hydrogen has to be on this side and methyl has to be on the other side. So, it will be a transposomer. So, this is a transposomer. So, the reasoning here, recent restricted rotation, similar groups are on opposite sides. So, this is the transbutene or transbutene. We know that geometrical isomerism is not uh, limited to compounds with double bonds. It can exist even in cyclic compounds. Considering one example, cyclohexane 1, 2 dimethyl cyclohexane, a cyclohexane with two methyl groups. Please have a look at this arrangement. The two methyl groups can be on the same side of the plane of the cyclohexane or it can be on either side on opposite sides of the cyclic ring. So here we rest, you present your answer like this. This compound exhibits geometrical isomerism. The reason is that there is a restricted rotation of CC single bond in cyclic compound and C is 3 on the same side of the ring, then it is a cis isomer. C is 3 on the opposite sides of the ring, then it is a trans isomer. We have another example here. Let us try to find out whether this is a cis isomer or a trans isomer. Please have a close look. Difficult. Why? Because there are no common substituents attached to both the carbon atoms. Here, in fact, all the four groups attached to the carbon atoms are different or around the double bond are different. In such cases, there has to be a new method of nomenclature and that is called the EZ notation or EZ notation, which can be considered as an extension of cis trans notation. This happens when all the four groups around the carbon-carbon double bond are different. Well, easy notation is assigned based on a set of rules. Let us check them one by one. The two groups on each doubly bonded carbon atoms are considered separately and assigned priorities. That means, first of all, we consider carbon 1. The group attached to the carbon 1 are taken and then they are assigned priority. Once this is over, then only we move to the second carbon atom, consider the groups attached to that carbon atom and then assign priority. So we consider the two carbon atoms separately. Now how to assign priority? This point is a very important point. The atoms directly connected to the double bonded carbon are chosen and assigned priority in the decreasing order of their atomic number. Let us see. The atoms directly attached to, to the doubly bonded carbon. Well, let us consider carbon 1 first. What are the groups attached? One is hydrogen, one is OH. Hydrogen is okay because that group has only one atom, so it is hydrogen with an atomic number 1. 
Now, considering the second group, that is OH, we have two atoms in the group, O and H. But what is, which is the atom that is directly attached to carbon? Definitely, we know that it is the O of the OH group that is attached to carbon. So, we consider O here. What is the atomic number of O? That is 8. So, O has a higher atomic number than hydrogen. So, O gets higher priority. Greater the atomic number, higher the priority. So, considering carbon 1, OH group is priority 1 and H group is priority 2. Moving on to the second carbon also, let us see how can we assign priority. Here, one of the groups is COOH, the other group is CH3O. In this case, the directly attached atom is carbon. The second group also directly attached atom is carbon. Then what do we do? Here, the next rule is going to help us here. If the atoms directly attached to the carbon are the same, atomic numbers of the second atoms are considered. Which is the second atom here? In this case, COOH, it is oxygen. And in CH3, the second atom is hydrogen. Obviously, oxygen has a higher atomic number. So, this gets priority 1 and CH3 gets priority 2. In fact, we don't have to move any further because we are happy here. And we get an answer. COOH is getting first priority and CH3 is getting second priority. Now, one more rule is there before we assign the notation. That is, multiple bonds are considered as separate single bonds. That means, that example is here itself. Consider COOH. In this case, C is attached to oxygen through a double bond and OH through a single bond. C double bond O, OH, right? The C double bond O is considered as separate single CO bonds. A double bond is considered as two single separate single bonds. That is the rule. We are going to find a few examples and then only we will understand it better. Well, this is how we assign priority. But once the priority is known to us, how are we going to name the compounds? Let us uh, move on and see how we are going to name this is how we name the compound that is if both the groups of higher priority are on the same side of the double bond the isomer is designated as is it zuzamin meaning together so obviously if the groups of higher priority are on opposite sides then the isomer is designated as e that is antigen opposite we will learn it more or we will know it more only if you do some examples we try well, let us try to assign easy notation or easy notation to some real molecules we will understand the nomenclature better by considering few case studies here is our first example in order to assign easy notations we need to apply the rules Rule number one, consider the carbons separately. Well, we can consider carbon one first. Rule number two, assign priority to the attached groups in the order of the atomic number of what? Directly attached to atoms. Well, here, chlorine on one side and CH3 on the other side, which is the directly attached to atom here. Only chlorine is there. So, chlorine is the directly attached atom. And uh, chlorine is the directly attached atom. And its atomic number is 17. Well, moving on to the second group. Second group has carbon and hydrogen in it. So, we need to consider the directly attached atom. And that is carbon here. And what is the atomic number of carbon? That is 6. So, of the two, we know that chlorine has a higher atomic number. So, chlorine gets a higher priority. Priority 1 and CH3 gets the second priority. So, carbon 1 is done. Now, carbon 2. Carbon 2 has two attachments, OH on one side and hydrogen on the other side. Considering OH, which is a directly attached atom, O of the OH is directly attached to carbon. So, what is its atomic number? 
O8. And moving on to the next atom here, it is easy because hydrogen is the only atom there and that is a directly attached atom. So its atomic number is one of the two, oxygen and hydrogen. Oxygen has more priority and hydrogen has less priority. So the priority is now assigned. The next step is to name the compound, E or is it? Well, for that we need to look at the positioning of the higher priority groups. The higher priority groups or the priority number one groups are on the same side of the carbon-carbon double bond and that means the isomer is an is it isomer. This is how you name the compound. Now let us consider another example. Well in this example let us apply the rules that is first of all let us consider the carbon separately okay carbon number one look at the substituent groups one is CH3 one is COH rule number two we need to look for the directly attached atoms and then assign priority but here in the case of CH3 the directly attached atom is carbon in the case of COH also the directly attached atom is carbon it is a tie then what do we do we know from the rule that you need to look for the second atom now so in order to understand this in a very clear manner let me take you to the next slide well here we are considering the first carbon alone of this carbon the first carbon alone is taken okay i hope there is no confusion there the first carbon alone is taken CS3 on one side and COOH on the other side. Now how to assign priority when the first attached atoms are the same? Considering them separately, look for the second atom. CS3 is written as C connected to three hydrogen groups like this. Hydrogen 1, hydrogen 2, hydrogen. This is CS3. And then we can consider the atomic numbers of the second atoms also. Then this becomes C plus H plus H plus H or 6 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. In total, 9. Let it be there. Now we are moving on to the next atom that is COOH. Here also we are going to consider COOH. Well, COOH is, we are going to write it like this, C is doubly bonded to oxygen and singly bonded to OH group, that is COOH. Here we have a double bond. How to decode the double bond? Let us see. We are going to write like this, C directly attached to OH group, a singly bonded one. But the double bond is going to be written as two separate single bonds. O, O. C double bond O is written as CO, CO. So this is how we find the atomic number when a double bond is present in the attached group. So carbon we have, we are left with a carbon which is attached to oxygen, oxygen, oxygen three times. So C plus O plus O plus O. That is 6 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. In total it is 30. Here compared to CS3 with 9, COOH with 30 gets the higher priority. So COOH gets a high priority and CS3 gets a second priority. Now it is easy for us to assign priorities. So let us move on to our compound. So this is how our molecule looks now. We have already assigned priority to the substituent groups on the first carbon atom. COH gets first priority, CS3 gets second priority. Moving on to the second carbon atom. Group 1 is OH, group 2 is Cl. Let us assign priority based on their atomic number. Considering OH, O is the directly attached atom, 
oxygen has an atomic number of eight and the second attached atom is chlorine chlorine has an atomic number of 17 we have already seen in one of the previous examples so 17 and 8 definitely chlorine has a higher priority because of the higher atomic number so let us assign priority now chlorine gets the first priority oxygen gets the second priority so the priorities are now assigned now it's time for assigning the notation e or z this is done by looking at the positions of the higher priority groups priority one groups Priority 1 groups are placed on either side or opposite sides of the C double bond C. So the notation will be E. The compound is an E isomer. It is always better to keep in your mind uh, the atomic numbers of certain common atoms like hydrogen 1, carbon 6, nitrogen 7, oxygen 8. These are all halogens starting from 9, fluorine 9, 17, 36. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. You must have noticed that even fluorine has a higher atomic number than oxygen. So normally when halogens are there, they get a priority. But you have to be very careful, cross-check it and before you finally assign the priority. That is a normal trend. Also, when two substituents on a single carbon atom are two different alkyl groups, normally the bulkier one will get the priority. We have five questions here and let us try to do the sums. That is assign notation to these compounds. Well, when you get a fresh question like this, you look for the type of isomerism. Definitely a double bond is here and the groups on the carbon, when you check, they are different. So this can be geometrical isomerism. Once you make sure that geometrical isomerism is possible in this compound, then you start assigning the nomenclature. Here again, it is not cis trans isomerism, it is E Z isomerism. Why? Because all the four groups attached are different. So we have decided on the notation also. It is E Z. Now, the next step is to assign E Z notation considering the rules of the EZ notation. Well, the first rule says that you have to consider each carbon separately. Let us do that. We are going to consider first carbon now. Then it says that priority has to be assigned to the substituents depending on their the atomic number of the directly attached atom. <laughs> Which are the directly attached atoms here? Hydrogen on one side, carbon of the CS3 on the other side. Carbon, as we all know, has an atomic number 6. Hydrogen has 1. So obviously, CS3 gets the first priority. Hydrogen gets the second priority. At this point, I would like to say this. Whenever there is hydrogen as one of the substituents, obviously the other one gets the first priority because hydrogen has only atomic number one and it with the least atomic number. Okay. Now moving on to the second carbon atom as per the rule. We are going to look for the directly attached atoms of the substituents. In this case OH it is O and in CHO it is C. C with atomic number six and O with atomic number eight. So OH will be getting the first priority. And CHO will be getting the second priority. And we will be now naming the compound depending on the positioning of the higher priority group. Let us look for the positions. Here the highest priority group is out towards the left hand side of the double bond. And here the highest priority group is placed to the right hand side. That is higher priority groups are on opposite sides of the double bond. And so the answer will be E notation. It's very simple. But we have seen this in detail because in this, in a similar fashion, I expect all of you to do the rest of the form. Take your time, do it by yourself and then come back and check your answer. And for you to check the answers, I'm leaving the answers here. It's e notation. Third case, it is E notation. Fourth case, it is Z notation again. And 
is it is E notation. So we are coming to the end of the session, guys. Before I leave, let me leave you with a few questions so that you can come back and do it when you get time. If you have any doubts in between, you can always contact me. You, can, you have my number, I'm sure. That's all, folks, for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. So till we meet again for optical isomerism, it's bye from me. Till then, stay safe, stay happy, take care. Bye-bye.